Hi, I'm Otto Oles from AboutDigitalHealth.com. I'm excited to tell you about the power of virtual reality or simply VR in healthcare. By watching this video, you will learn how virtual reality can reduce chronic and acute pain, treat mental diseases and support the training of medical professionals. I will answer the question of whether virtual reality can replace some medicines in the future, but I will also look closer at the risk associated with this emerging therapy. You will also discover the practical applications of VR in medicine. I interviewed a leading expert in the field of virtual therapeutics, Dr. Brennan Spiegel, who is Director of Health Services Research for Cedar sinai Health Systems. We talked about what VR teaches us about consciousness, modern neuroscience, the intersection between technology, psychology and philosophy. And finally, together we will take a closer look inside the book VRX, how virtual therapeutics will revolutionize medicine, to explore the latest studies regarding virtual reality in healthcare and intriguing experiments that reveal how we can trick the brain. So let's get started.
Yeah, I think um, starting with pain is the most obvious place because pain is so pervasive and burdensome and impacts quality of life so substantially and costs so much money that this is probably the largest impact VR can have. Pain is divided into acute pain and chronic pain. So technically this might be two different use cases, um, but for now we'll keep it as one. Um, and there's extensive evidence that VR can help, especially with acute pain. For example, somebody coming out of the operating room who's in pain, before we start using a lot of opioid medications, which could lead to dependency, um, we might think more about starting virtual reality early and often when somebody comes out of the operating room. The other areas um, really focus on mental health. Uh, anxiety is an area that is also extremely pervasive, often concurrent or comorbid with pain. There are a number of companies, startup companies that are developing and have really come very far along uh, their development pathway for anxiety-based uh, VR treatments. And those could be delivered to people's homes and self-administered in many cases without requiring uh, a clinician to be right there. So this is another really exciting um, opportunity. You know, VR also has incredible opportunity for training and simulation in healthcare um, for clinicians who need to learn procedures or learn operations or even learn how to engage with a patient in just a conversation. All of that can be simulated. You know, this whole idea that we just treat the body with drugs and the brain with, you know, talk therapy is kind of an old idea. It's, you know, modern neuroscience recognizes that, you know, the two sides are one. We, the, the body is an extracranial extension of the brain. So, you know, virtual reality is essentially a mind-body intervention that's evidence-based um, and not unlike other treatments that have been around for years, for decades, for hundreds of years, um, but that uh, it just standardizes the experience. Is it gaming? No, uh, in some cases it's gaming. And by the way, games have therapeutic benefits and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but usually we're not talking about games. We're talking about building skills, cognitive behavioral therapy, biofeedback therapy, um, or think about in schizophrenia where we use a virtual reality trialogue therapy to help uh, patients manage their hallucinations. I mean, that's certainly not a game. We typically see sort of two moments. The first is um, what I call the moment of um, cognitive immersion or, uh, or maybe conscious immersion where you realize that you are in a three-dimensional space and this psychological concept called presence takes over. And this is where the brain feels and the body feels like it is actually present in this environment. So that's the first point where you become um, immersed cognitively. So I now know and feel like I'm in this environment and you'll see people smile or say, oh my God, or wow, or these sorts of things. But then a few minutes later, and it doesn't always happen, but we can see it when it does, there's this moment of physiologic immersion. This is where you can see like the brain has finally kind of gotten used to this environment and now you see them often take a big deep breath and just sort of relax into the bed. And you can see sometimes their heart rate slow down or even their blood pressure drop. And this is this point where the autonomic nervous system is taking over and is relaxing into the experience. And that's generally what we're trying to achieve in the acute setting is not just the conscious immersion, but the physiologic immersion. So people feel like mind and body have relaxed into the experience. Sounds like a matrix? In a way it is. In the 1999 science fiction movie Morpheus tells us that if real is what you can feel, smell, taste and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. The full capabilities of the mind are still unexplored. We are at the beginning of discovering the possibilities of VR in medicine. Many companies and startups are working on novel solutions that can, for example, strengthen the doctor-patient relationship 
motivate towards lifestyle changes, improve compliance, patient engagement, or even prepare terminally ill patients for death. New technologies use biofeedback to enhance the effectiveness of the VR experience. VR medicine will become real in a few years. Science and technology are not a barrier anymore. We lack staffing with digital literacy, infrastructure and funding. We need vision and a new mindset in healthcare. I hope I convinced you that virtual reality can potentially become the next track of the future. If you want to find out more, please click the link below to read the full interview with Dr. Brennan Spiegel, author of the book VRX – How Virtual Therapeutics Will Revolutionize Medicine. If you like the video, tell your friend about it, share it and subscribe to the YouTube channel and aboutdigitalhealth.com newsletter. See you next time!